I tend to um, have way too busy body of a brain, which is a good thing if you're editing, you know, if you're finishing a song, if you're going back through it like with a fine tooth comb and you're making sure every single word is right. Um, that's a great tool to have, but on the, on the front end, I don't want anything to do, I don't want my brain driving the car, you know. So I believe in this sort of other source where the really the best stuff comes through. And it doesn't come through finished all the time, but it's what I call the creative flow. And the flow, the creative flow is just like oxygen, it's just flowing everywhere. And people absorb different amounts of it depending on their capacity. So one of the things I do when I teach a workshop is I'm interested in everybody becoming more of a sponge for that. And of course it's important to learn all the technical skills of how to tighten up a song, how to recognize when a song could be better. When I do a critique, I'm always I'm looking for it, looking at it very intellectually. When I'm writing, especially when I'm starting the process of writing, I am not. I'm totally bloody bloody. I'm like flowing, and I love to get a student up and just put, say, start in G. Okay, now just make up a melody completely uh, right now, and don't worry, it can't be stupid because it's coming from that flow. And that's, I think that's how great the greatest works of art and songs are written and people tend to want to know how to write. My very first time ever uh, teaching writing was at Berkeley in Boston, and the professor, Pat Patterson, a uh, wonderful teacher and songwriter, had written a whole chapter in, in his book where he took one of my songs apart, and he had just dead, just tiny little details and all the things I had done when I was writing it, and I, I didn't get a chance to read it till I was on the plane flying up there to do a residency, and I was reading it on the plane, and I was like, Oh my God, I had no idea I did all that, you know? Because when I was writing, I was just going, and that sounds like I said, duh, 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 duh. you know, I follow it blindly. I follow this sort of filmy, cloudy stuff until something pops through. And I've learned to trust it, and it's just so much fun. My favorite part of writing is goofing around at the beginning when you don't have to name it, you don't have to say what it is, and, you know, all the hard work's on the back end. <laughs> That's enough to guide us home. Um, there's a lot of fun tricks that I do, a lot of games I like to play. Um, you know, and there's some basic things in life, like you cannot, you cannot ever say that it's not a great thing to do some sort of meditation every day. Now, I don't do it every day, I should, because when I do, I'm much more tuned into that flow. Uh, but stopping, even if it's for five minutes several times a day and just going into a place, and you, you know, depending on what way you like to meditate, it doesn't matter. As long as you just still your mind, that really opens up and that works the muscle out. One of the greatest things you can do is show up and write. And when you're not coming up with anything, hang out there for another 15 or 20 minutes, even if nothing's happening. And you know, people say, oh, I just sat there for an hour and I didn't write anything. And I go, wow, that's fantastic. You just lifted 3,000 pounds in the weight, in the in the gym of creativity. You just went weightlifting. You were weightlifting your creative stamina. So there's like this invisible muscle that I believe in that even when you're not writing, if you're showing up willing to write, you're working. You're, you're actually doing something extremely valuable. In fact, it might be more valuable than when you're flowing and you know writing everything down. Because the writer that's, just, that's not afraid to show up and not have anything happen is usually gonna be way more advanced, you know. People like Paul Simon and you know, I mean they, they're just, they're, they, they're not gonna freak out and panic if it's not a day when something doesn't come through. They, they have a great relationship with, with that flow. And I'm working on it all the time trying to have that same level. I think in order to really come up with stuff and to write stuff, you have to be almost childlike and almost naive and and letting it all in. You have to let all sorts of crap come through. And what a lot of writers tend to do is, oh, that sucks. And then they don't even record it or they don't write it down. And I call them the lines on the way to the lines. And the creative flow is not about fine tuning. It's about suggestion. It's really gentle. and. The creative flow is not, it's like I tell people there's like a hole in the top of your head that you have the power to pull things in 
or not. And if you have a lot of stuff going on in your head and it's busy, 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 it's not going to push its way in. It's just going to hang out and if there's a way it can get in, it'll go in. If it's not, it won't. So, you know, the door is, the opener is on your side of the door. So that feels empowering to people who feel stuck and they feel like, why can't I do it? Why am I stuck in these songs? Why I keep writing the same thing? And Because they're probably writing from the laptop and not from going online. And, you know, you can write a lot of stuff from, you can have a lot of stuff on your hard drive that's really great, you know, but it's like moving furniture around. But to create a new piece of furniture, you gotta go, you gotta go beyond it. And it's beyond words, it's actually tonal. It's melodic and tonal a lot of times. And even if you're a lyricist and you don't write melody, it's still tonal, you know, because if you think about the great melodies, you think about Bernie Taupin. Someone saved my life tonight. Is it Sugar Bear? I always love that line. Um, you know, someone saved my life tonight. Da 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 da. Someone saved my life tonight. Someone saved my life tonight. It's like Elton John just channeled sort of the beyond those words, and he has that great talent for lifting it to the next melodic place. It's just like I think it's just magic, and I, I get goosebumps and I cry and all sorts of oh my god, you know, like when I'm writing and. And it's happening. It's just like a, it's like an amazing miracle for me. There are people who have a particular, extraordinary bent towards particular uses of their creative talent. Like some people just were born to paint, and some people were born to sing and write songs. Some people were born just to write songs and not sing. And you might be really born to find that, which way am I a creative genius? But the fact that you are a creative genius is absolutely indisputable to me. So I have workshops where I have housewives and people who've never picked up a guitar that don't even remotely um, have a desire or intention of becoming a songwriter. Because what I'm talking about is not limited to songwriting. I just happen to also teach a lot of songwriters, and I'm a songwriter myself, so that's my vehicle most of the time. But, for instance, in 2000, I, I went through breast cancer, and for a year and a half, I was going through chemotherapy and all this stuff, and my lyric writing part of my brain was just totally like, it, it was like a wall, you know? My music part of my brain was rocking. I wrote some melodies during that time that were just inspired. I just showed up and, you know, dragged myself to the piano and recorded. I didn't think I was doing anything. I was just like, okay, whatever. I did my 10 minutes, I'm going, you know. And I listened back through it a year later and found two or three melodies that ended up being songs that were just fantastic, you know. So, you know, trusting that it's always there. Um, and during that time, the reason I brought that up is during that time, I started painting. And I'm not an accomplished painter at all. I just kind of play and but I, I had a deep need to sort of push color around. I wanted to put red and squish it into blue and make purple, and it was just a very primal need to, to sort of fill my heart with something creative. And it wasn't like I was gonna go have an art show anytime soon. So, but the value of that, the value of expressing oneself creatively is so underrated and so pushed to the back. And people are thinking, how am I gonna make money? You know, how am I gonna be? And now, especially during this period of time when music is struggling to pay its own light bill because of this horrendous, you know, which we're gonna refer to as the dark ages, you know, where most of the energy and the, and the riches from music, which are still flowing, are just going into the pockets of people that didn't necessarily create it because they can get away with it, you know. So that's a whole other interview which I can go on and on about. Um, and I'm not talking about people that download, I'm talking about the companies that make money off of, off of all the advertising, and, you know, the big, big companies that, that um, are s sort of creating... Uh, yeah, anyway, they're, they're on a roll, but I don't think that's forever. I think that's going to sort itself out. My son and my daughter-in-law are both songwriters, many, many young people that I work with in Nashville brilliant you know this next generation of songwriters and I say my t-shirt says write anyway you know whatever you're up against write anyway because it's that art form is also a healing modality it's also a part of your humanity and you're gonna write something that nobody else can say because nobody else owns that piece of real estate that's coming out from behind your eyes and seeing the world exactly in that spot that you're in so and ha 
and nobody's had your experience exactly. Although we, you know, when you write from that place in your own experience, everybody else gets it because they're all, you know, we're all sharing the same seven emotions, you know. So it's just a great thing to do, even if you're not gonna, if you can detach from I have to have a hit or I, I you know, like I've had six number one hits and I've never tried to write a song to be a hit. I've just tried to write a song that was a hit with me, you know, like that I would love, that I would be like, wah, you know, over the moon about. So yeah, just keep on writing. That's my, that's my motto.